Hi, Addie. Hello, we were just finishing science. Oh, no problem. Did my response about the chart make sense to you? Yes, it did. Thank you. Okay. Did um, my reply make sense? Um, I didn't. I didn't get to read your reply yet. I I pulled your piece of work to put in the um, so we can look at it today, but I didn't actually get to read it all yet. So I will continue that when uh, sometime tonight. So is it snowing where you are? Um, kind of. It's yeah. not as snowy as it is supposed to be, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, we got a like maybe two inches last night. I didn't have school today. I'm not really sure why, but um, we didn't. And it's it is snowing here now. I don't know how much is laying. I really want. I love snow. I really want like a big blizzard. Well, we went skiing yesterday, and it was very fun because there was it was like the perfect amount of snow and texture and everything like that. Yeah. Yeah. So where'd you go skiing? We went skiing at New Germany State Park, which is like just up the road, kind of. I Twenty minutes away. I've never heard of it. I haven't been skiing in. It was very fun. Cool. So do you go skiing a lot? We try to. Yes. <laughs> Our property is really big. Okay. So are you, do you have to leave early tonight, or are you on with us the whole time? No, I am on this. Cool. How did, I'm very uh, excited. How did your trick at Magic Camp go? Oh, it went very well. Um, it was one that I was going to get at the Magic Conference, but okay. I just decided to make it instead, and it worked very well. Good. Trying to. I have way too many screens open. I'm trying to <laughs> consolidate. I'm really good at just opening screens and then leaving everything open. Yes. Yeah. I liked your videos of you painting to the music. Those were fun to watch. Yeah, that was. It was fun to do. For this week's assignment, I'm going to do a photograph. I think. Cool. In the style of Vivian. Okay. I thought that might be happening since your Pinterest board had so many photos on it. <laughs> yes, the one I sent you? Yeah. Marvelous. Are you doing um, a film photo or are you doing digital? Film, probably. Okay. Cool. That'll be fun. Have you decided how you're, how you're dressing yourself up? Um, not really. I kind of have a little bit of an idea, but I have to figure out where my camera needs to be set and everything like that. Mm -hmm. I've been looking at some of them. Cool. Very cool. Hi, Kaylee. Yes. How are you doing tonight? Good. We'll give it like two more minutes and see if anyone else shows up and then we'll get started since it's just according to my clock anyway. Um, one minute after 4.30. Um, Kaylee, while we're on here just hanging out, do you have questions about anything from last week or what you're doing this week? Okay, no problem.
Jared and Parker. Yes, hello. How are you guys doing? Good, good. Good. All right. Well, I, we're going to go ahead and get started. So today we're, and this is what we're going to do really most weeks from this point forward. We are going to look at each other's work and talk about it. I kind of pulled from a variety of things. Um, so some are breadth pieces, some are mark making pieces that people sent in. Um, I'm pretty sure <laughs> that I got through all of you. There was a ton of emails in my inbox this morning. Um, I'll answer that question in a second, Addie. Um, so you should have gotten back from me anything that you sent, minus you, Addie. Um, but everybody else, I graded, sent it back to you. I sent out the updated grade, grade report, so you should have that. And then we're going to get more feedback today as we look at the pieces. Um, and so any questions you have about your piece thus far, we can talk about today. Um, Addie asked just a random question, would binding books be considered 3D design? Um, I don't, I'm going to have to ponder that one as to, <laughs> uh, yeah, let me, let me think a little bit more on that one for you, Addie, because I, I'm not 100% positive what to say at this exact moment. All right, so I am going to switch so you're not looking at me, and hopefully you are. Um, if you can just let me know, I'm rearranging screens a little bit. Uh, if you can just let me know that, <laughs> Addie says a very flat book. Uh, if you can just let me know that you can see my screen right now, so that I know we're all looking at the same thing before I'm jabbering with myself. Okay, Addie says it's an endless tunnel. That is not what we're going for. <laughs> <laughs> so let's try this one. All right, is it still an endless tunnel or <laughs> can you see my screen? Kaylee, or, okay, so Kaylee sees it, Jared and Parker see it now, Addie says nope, but I'm not sure if the nope is to, it's not an endless tunnel, or nope, you can't see it. RJ sees it, okay, Addie thinks, I mean it's not a tunnel. Thank you, I shouldn't have asked more than one question at the same time. So, um, just so I'm going to... So we have two options, and you guys can tell me which. So one, I can make this full screen, which is going to make the images bigger, but that means you're going to have to speak out loud because I can't monitor the chat box, or they stay smaller, and you can type, and I can monitor the chat box. So let me know what you want me to do. Addie says, good either way. I need, like, three computers. Okay, well, we'll go with small, and if we need to jump back and forth and go big every once in a while, we can. Um, so this first piece that we're looking at is by Jared, and I'm going to show you because he also sent me um, this other piece, which I'm going to have you talk to us a little bit about um, if these are just detailed, like, close-up shots, but this kind of looks like something different. So tell us a little bit about um, your idea behind the piece, how you went about making it, and kind of what we're seeing in the overall piece and the detailed piece, and then we will chat. Um, the, the, the last two shots that... They were actually zoom up because the photo was kind of um, it was kind of crappy because when I took the camera shot, it completely obscured the figure in the okay. pills in the other areas. So I just did the zoom ins to help you see the details. Okay, that's what I thought, but I wanted to make sure because there's um, 
I wasn't the reason that I asked, which this is kind of helpful for for me, but also helpful for you, because I know one of the questions you asked was, um, "Can we see the figure enough?" So the reason I asked if this was a a zoom in or like a completely different kind of test um, is because in the bigger, so in the full version, it's really not picking up. I can't say I, I even notice any of this like red coming from the light or I notice the reflections but not nearly as vibrant on the water. Um, as I said to you in, in my comment, I don't know if you got to read it or not, so I don't necessarily think that's a, a bad thing. Um, I asked you a couple questions with, so right now I think the man looks uh, very mysterious so it kind of gives off this feeling of mystery and loneliness and wonder where if in this um, it does tell a little bit of a different story so some of it is going to come from your own artistic perspective and voice but that may be helpful feedback just so you can see and know what someone who doesn't hasn't seen it before what my initial read was. Um, so how are what are your thoughts or feelings on that on that since I've said that to you? Well, yes, I definitely agree that um, that taking a better picture would be better to show all the detail in the work. And from this piece, I am very comfortable using pastels because because watercolors are usually a very tedious process in layering and trying to get all the detail and all the colors and medium together. So having yeah. having pastels is definitely a easier option for me. Yeah. Cool. It's it's good to know what you like to work with. So are you thinking and any of the rest of you if you um have questions for him, you can ask them too. I'm paying attention to the chat. Um, well, oh, I know what I was going to ask you. So are you thinking, and maybe you don't even know the answer to this yet, that you want to, for the most part, stick with maybe mediums that you're comfortable with or that you've used already and push the breadth through subject matter and composition and things like that? Or are you planning on kind of going all over the place uh, when it comes to medium? Are you still there, Jared? I don't know what happened to them. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Well, I think um, I should explore all options and mediums so I can demonstrate my student voice. Mm -hmm. and try out new options. Yeah. Uh, so another thing I, I asked you when I sent this back to you, um, and this is for all of you to think about um, in part of really even sensing if you're really pushing yourself in your work is thinking about were you uncomfortable doing some of it? Not that any of us really enjoy being uncomfortable. We like to stick with what we know and what we're comfortable with. Um, but that doesn't tend to push our work farther and farther. So was there anything while you were working on this piece that kind of made you feel uncomfortable or like you didn't know what you were doing? Well, because it was pastel, it was really hard to control because while I was trying to do the, while I was drawing, it kind of smears and because there's yeah. such a stark um, contrast between the light, light yellow and the black sky, it's really hard mm -hmm. to keep that, um, to keep that balanced. Mm -hmm. so it was really, really difficult for me to sh to make sure that I don't color the white values and make the make everything appear really dark. Yeah. What size is this piece? The size of this piece was actually a bit smaller than than by twelve by eighteen, which is a original size of all my concentration pieces. Okay. Okay. Cool. 
All right, we may come back here, but we're going to jump around a little bit. So this is one um, that Jessica submitted, and this was one that was part of her mark-making assignment. So she wasn't officially turning it in as a breadth piece, but I'm telling her to do so. And I there are times through throughout when we're doing exercises or activities where I might email you back, and obviously I'm never going to force you to do it. It's always ultimately your decision because it's your work and your portfolio. Um, but I might email you back and say, hey, you might want to consider this for a breadth piece. Yeah, I really like how it turned out. Yeah. <laughs> so um, what do you like about it? Um, well, I actually use a palette knife. I found one in my room. I've never used it before when I was painting, and, like, I experimented with that, and I did, like, I, I mix watercolors and oils, so the, the white dripped a little more because it was watercolor, so I really liked that on top, and I just played around, and I honestly got to, like, a point where I really liked it, so I've never Good. done anything like it before, yeah. And so how did you decide which, like, which direction this was supposed to go, like which was the top and the bottom. Was it this is the direction you painted? Um, I liked how like the blue in the middle went up. That's how I decided like how I was gonna like take a picture of it. And what made that blue, what made you decide to bring that blue into the piece? Well it was all like darker colors, like the reds, more like earthy, and I just kind of wanted to put something in there that made it like stand out a little bit. But I don't want to put too much of it. Yeah. So um, from the rest of you, whoever wants to chime in, um, I want to know your thoughts on the blue. Do you like it and why? Do you think it should go? Do you think there should be more? So what kind of job do you think that the blue that we have here and a little bit up here is serving in the overall composition? I honestly don't think it needs like you don't need to do too much more to it because I I really like it to tell you, tell you the truth I really um the blue and just all the colors go really well together. Mhm. Mm um, Kaylee says I like it a lot. It catches my eye. Uh, so one of the things I had said, oh, Addie wrote, I think that it looks like a bird's wing. Um, of course you would because there's birds in so many of your pieces. Um, I think that. Um, there could maybe be a little bit more. Um, I do see kind of a bird now that you say that, though. So the one thing that I said to Jessica when I sent it back to her was that this blue actually became really important because in all of our work you're looking to have some contrast, but in abstract work it's even more essential so that it doesn't just look like this total chaos. Um, and so the blue, actually, this mark right here, the blue becomes the subject and kind of becomes a focal point and then just scattered up here and down here a little bit. It helps to keep moving the eye, but it also gives you something to look at and kind of something to rest on so it's not just all like the energy and the craziness of the background. Um, and it's also kind of a bold move of putting it right in the center of the canvas, which um, all things in art, I never call them rules. I like to call them guidelines because there are plenty of times for any guidelines, so learning about composition and things like that, there are plenty of times you will always be able to find an example and be like, look at what this person did, and it looks awesome. So here, she kind of broke the idea of the subject shouldn't be in the center. Put it in the center and it's actually working very well in the piece. <laughs> so I'm glad you found your palette knife. Yeah, um, it was really fun. I've never done anything like that. I just kind of got into it, like a lot of like hand movement and everything. It was great. <laughs> and this is a big change from your concentration pieces. So that's also good to kind of show and look at that this, you're yeah. still working in the same medium, so you're still dealing with paint but you're dealing with paint in a whole different way. Um, another thing, since you liked doing the palette knife, is you can use, continue to use the palette knife um, and use it as a paintbrush, but use it to paint something 
that's recognizable, but it's still going to come up with very different mark making and a very different feel than previous pieces that you've done. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I love painting with palette knives, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just one last thing about the piece sure. itself. Uh, I, I really like the whole energy of it. And um, I think I like the blue because it could have a lot of different interpretations from the audience. Like, it could be like a, a person in a really hectic scene or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. Were you listening to music I, I like when you made this? Um, I'm trying to think. I don't think I was, but like at first I was kind of like, it looked flat and like I wasn't really into it, but then I started doing layers and like I like thought what it meant and like it just became something to me. <laughs> nice. Good. Well, I'm glad you kept going with it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. On to Parker. So, um, one of the questions. Well, actually, before I ask her question, so Parker, why don't you tell us a little bit about um, the medium that you used and the idea behind the piece? Unless we lost you. Are you there, Parker? That kind of reminds me of the like the V for Vandetta mask. Oh yeah. <laughs> I never watched that movie, but I saw previews for it, so I know what you mean. Well, I don't know where Parker is, but um, well, we'll um hello, can you? Oh, hear there me? you are. <laughs> yep, can you repeat the question? My computer froze. You got it. I thought you guys disappeared somewhere. Um, so what I asked is if you could tell us a little bit about the medium that you used to make the piece and the overall idea behind the piece. Well, I used um, pastel medium for this piece on an 18 by 12 piece of paper, which is the same size as my concentration size. Later in my portfolio, I'll vary the size shapes. Uh, what I thought about this piece was making a um, mysterious uh, coffee sh uh, restaurant at nighttime with all the warm lighting systems and I thought I could break up the balance of the landscape by putting a off figure of an old man sitting near the table to add a, a ominous and strange a strangeness feel to the painting of a direct eye contact with the old man and having blurs of figure in the background which could be implied as people just continuing their everyday pass by this restaurant. So I was in this piece it was greatly uh, inspired by Van Gogh and his pastel paintings, which probably made this painting influenced by painting to make this uh, really warm colors and expressive wide movements. Cool. So one thing that um, Parker had asked when he sent this to me was my feelings in response to the colors because the colors are kind of, they're pretty harsh, pretty bright and vibrant, um, which I believe he surprised himself a, a little bit with those. Um, so I already shared my thoughts with him, but I'd love to hear your thoughts and responses to the color palette in this piece. I really like it. I think it really makes the darks pop. So. Okay. I like it. So, so it makes the, the darks pop. Um, oh, yeah, because it's so bright versus the dark. I, I like it. Mm -hmm. How do you think the color works to kind of convey the message and the feeling that Parker was talking about? Is it helpful in that or is it distracting from that? Um. Yeah, as what well, um it looks pretty eerie as Kaylee just said. I agree with that. What was um the purpose behind the piece? Like what did you want it to mean? Um well, I think he was kind of mentioning that it was supposed to be a little bit mysterious and eerie, which I had um before he told me that that's what I I think the colors really feel that way cuz it's kind of glowing, which makes it seem it has a feeling like it's really, really late at night, like 2 o'clock in the morning or something like that. And it is um, 
really interesting because we have this figure that's kind of just peeking up at us as well as the placement of the figure in the composition is implying that there's all this other space that we don't know about which is also kind of intriguing so we know that there's there's something up here in front of us because he's probably at a table um, as we as well as we know there's probably things over here which adds some more mystery to it because um, his simple placement is telling us that there's a lot more happening here that we don't actually see or don't know about. Um, Addy says, I really liked how the old man's face matches the lighting on the counter. Um, yeah, so it also feels like they're much, like the place is really that color and it's reflecting onto his face. Um, Addy says, are the dark shadows people? I'm thinking you're you're talking about these Addy, so yes, which also gives off kind of a, a an overall creepy feel. Cool, very nice. And I think it's really cool how you use the lighting like to portray a mood. Like I don't know, I feel like it has a story to it. Like um, it like reminds me of like going really late at night to a restaurant and there's only like one person there who's kind of creepy and um, looking at you, and I like it. Yeah. Uh, you also did a really great job of picking up reflection and highlights on the table, which those reflections and highlights that are happening really help to make these tables look real um, and makes them become super, super three-dimensional, like we could enter into the place. Um, Addie said the repetition of the squares is nice and carries through the piece. Yes. All right, we're going to jump to a next one because I want to make sure we get through everyone. So I don't know if Natalia's on. Is she on? No. Okay, well, we'll talk about her anyway. Um, so these are two pieces that she sent, and um, one wanted to know which one was stronger, and two wanted to know if I felt like they were finished. So... Um, I want to hear your responses first. So which one, we'll start with, which one of these pieces do you think is the stronger one thus far? I think the first one is stronger because it has less white space. That's just me, though. Okay. Yeah. Um, Kaylee says, I like the one on the left. And why do you like the one on the left, Kaylee? So far, the left has gotten two votes. I'm assuming this is left, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Making sure we're looking at this the same way. Um, so I also told her I felt like this one... Um, Addy says, I think the drawing on the left one is stronger. Kaylee, I agree with Jessica that it has more color and is not as much white. So I think this one also, not only does it have more color and there's not quite as much negative space, but overall it looks like a whole composition where this kind of looks like three different things are happening, which in a couple slides I'm going to show you some sketchbook examples because there are definitely times which we've already looked at, but there are times where you can do things in your sketchbook that turn into finished pieces. So there are ways that they can become finished pieces, but right now... Um, on this one, each thing is really segregated from the other, and they're really not working together to create an overall whole composition. Um, Jared and Parker said, I believe the work on the left side of the paper is better. The work has movement. The people's faces follow the flow of the lines. Yeah. Um, however, I was, oops, go ahead. I know, I was just going to mention that, that how I, I feel like... Um, the one on the left has like a lot of movement. Like I, I see the blur almost. Like I feel, you know. Like and that's really cool. With yeah. The color. So I did encourage her to to work on this one a little bit more, um, because I don't think it's finished yet. So she has some interesting patterns created with the brush strokes, and then the faces themselves. Um, I want. I told her to think of the faces as actual shapes, and another part of the pattern that there needs to be some more overlapping and some more repetition to come in so that it looks intentional. Because right now, the faces still look kind of separate from one another as well as separate from the overall composition. 
Addy asked, what is the medium? And I don't actually know the answer to that question. Um, I mean, it looks like it's pen and, and paint, possibly, but I don't have that information. So what I did was pull some examples of, of pages from sketchbooks that actually can work as finished pieces, one to help her, but it, also, in case some of you were thinking about it, or some of you may already have a ton of things in, in a sketchbook that could turn into something. So here, it's a really simple drawing, which is fine. So it doesn't have to be overly complex. Um, there can be negative space, and it can still be a complete piece, that we have this little figure down here, lots and lots of pattern up here, and then they're connected through this watering can falling down. But it looks like a complete thought or a complete idea that's all working together. Um, this is a whole bunch of examples of sketchbook pages, which I'm going to make my screen big just for a second, which means I'm not going to be able to see what you're typing, but because this is a small image to begin with, I feel like this would be helpful. So these are lots of sketchbook pages, and you can see some are more complicated than others. Uh, whoops, wrong. Oh, another wrong button. Uh, even this is just a line drawing. It's never been finished, but all of these pieces could turn into breadth pieces. But again, there's still some intention behind them, and it looks like a complete thought-out composition. I'm going to switch. Yeah, just go back so I can see you. Um, Addie says, I have a really cool book called Sketch Your World, and the art in it is really cool. So we might have to look that book up, Sketch Your World. So this is another one um, where there's this nice watercolor painting, and then there's simple like line drawings and notes around it. So that's fine as a finished piece. This is another one that's really sketchbooky. So there's all kinds of notes around it. That does work, um, but you want to think about how the overall everything's working together. So hopefully that is helpful when she listens to the call again. We're going to jump on to Kaylee. So this is one that Kaylee sent as one of her mark-making assignments that I also recommended. We're actually going to look at a couple of Kaylee's mark-making assignments um, that I recommended she might want to consider sending in for a breadth piece. So Kaylee, if you can tell us um, what medium you did for this piece. Okay, so Kayla used acrylic paints. Um, and then I want to hear from the rest of you. One, like, yes, I think it's finished, and I think it's totally finished because, or no, I don't think it's quite finished. I'd like to see her try. So Addie says, I like the shading of the snow. Kind of impressionistic, kind of thinking. Yeah. I like it. The colors, I like the contrast of the colors. Um, and do like you think it's finished? The, no. I, I think it, it could definitely be finished. I mean, if there are any things, I know how it is, like people with their own pieces, so I can't really tell you for sure, but like maybe you want to add, if you want to add a few more things, but honestly, I don't think you need to because, you know. Okay, so yeah. Jessica says, no, I don't think it's finished yet. I think more shades of brown on the mountains might be interesting. Addie says, me being me, I think that a red bird would add a lot. Um, I think it's really close to being finished, but it could use a little bit more contrast. So even coming in with some other, you started to bring some other mark making in here. It looks like there's some dripping going on. So potentially playing with more of that, um, which is going to make it look more intentional. So right now these drips are like on the edge of being intentional and being like, uh, I flung my paintbrush and I didn't want to. Um, 
So I think more of that. Jared and Parker said, I would like to see her try to put more detail on the brown mountains. Detailed jagged lines on the mountains will contrast from the smooth snow or river at the bottom. Yes, I agree. So going into these, um, and you could continue to use paint and just go more detailed in with your paintbrush, or you could um, play with marker or like one of the paint pens. But overall right now, it's a pretty consistent texture. And without a ton of work, I think this could become a rather successful finished piece. So those are some, um, those are some ideas for you to consider and play. Then this is another one of Kaylee's uh, that I think is going somewhere. So I don't want her to completely um, abandon it. Same thing, maybe consider um, just adding a little bit more contrast into it. But both uh, strong pieces that I think can turn into breadth pieces for you. Uh, this is another one I pulled from her. So many of you, Addie says it looks like water lilies. Yes, it does. Um, many of you with the mark making exercises, so obviously you were copying another artist and some of you copied more than others, which the goal was just to get you to, to learn from them. Um, so those pieces, depending on how much they were copied, so this one still changed a decent amount from the one she was looking at. This one's very similar, but you can still keep them in mind as they might be a background for something. You might end up cutting them up into another collage or thinking about what else you want to add onto it and how can you turn it into your own, um, your own piece. So this piece... Let me, I feel like it's cut off a little bit. This piece is one that Kaylee sent in as her breath piece. And right now, these two paintings that we looked at previously are actually stronger than this piece. So that's part of the reason I was encouraging you to go rework those a little bit. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your idea behind this? I think you use pencil and color pencil. Um, so your idea behind this, and then any questions you have or what you're struggling with with it. And while she is working on that, the rest of you can be thinking about um, what you think would make this piece a stronger piece or what you would want to see her add or do to it. I like it. I think it's really cool. Um, this is. I'm not sure. Is my microphone on? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I think um, one thing. This is more like my my kind of take on it. But you could do it if you want. Just kind of add like on the sketch, like the piece of paper, because you're like the subject is drawing on it. To add like just like some more kind of surrealistic, crazy stuff like swirls and. Whatever. Okay. Okay, so Kaylee said I had people live in live in loose <laughs> I had people live in loose leaf paper and then have some bugs terrorizing their homes. It was meant to be a sketch a student was drawing during class. Okay, cool. Um I think you're getting there. I just cool. think um a little bit more needs to happen. So it definitely can be kind of like this doodle page that someone was doing in class. This little guy right here, which I'm going to make my screen big again for a second. So this little, this little dude peeking through the page is really good and really interesting, as well as this little hand that's coming up and grabbing. Um, and so actually, to be honest with you, um, while I can't do it on here, you can play with it when you're editing. It, this like so this kind of square that I'm drawing like minus the the bumblebee could actually be a whole piece because this is really intriguing and you've done a good job of making it look three dimensional and making it look like he's popping out as well as this little hand so I think there are a couple pieces within this piece that you could just crop and use them. 
Um, if you wanted to keep working with this whole piece, it's just that there's too much negative space happening. And so um, that needs to be filled up some more. But you have some really, really strong elements happening. All right, so we have all kinds of comments. Addie says, first of all, I like the little man riding the bee. It's really cool. Maybe making the bugs bigger with little harnesses and riders. So that is definitely an option. Um, a, a little Dinotopia, which apparently is a book. Addie is full of book knowledge today. Um, RJ, oh sweet, now that it's bigger. Yeah, it does help when it's bigger. Jared and Parker, I believe Kaylee could change the perspective of the drawing. So the paper could be on the the paper could be on the bottom of the paper. On the top of the paper, Kaylee could show an instructor writing on a chalkboard. The drawing could be at the bottom of the paper. Yeah, so that could be potentially helpful, giving it um, a little bit more of a context um, so that we see this open page happening down here. And up here, you actually see the teacher. Or even if we just get a little bit more of an open view, um, if it looks like we can see the whole notebook. So we see the spiral bound notebook and we actually see it on the desk and we see the student's hand. That would also be helpful in giving it some more, like kind of more context to it. Um, and Addie says maybe the bugs could fly off the page. So we just gave you like 30,000 ideas, Kaylee. Um, was that helpful or did we confuse you? Okay, she says, yes, thank you, good. So Sometimes that can be good or like, oh my gosh, you guys make my head spin. Um, and bite off the teacher's head. Okay, RJ, that sounds a little bit disturbing. <laughs> that would make me nervous if I saw a student's notebook and they had a drawing of them biting my head off. And so RJ says, sorry, a little weird. It's okay. Um... And so this one is from Miss Addie. So, oh, thank you. RJ's not going to bite my head off. Um, <laughs> so, Addie, if you can tell everyone a little bit about the inspiration for this piece, um, the mediums that you used, and if you have any specific questions that you really want feedback on. So, Addie says, watercolor is not my forte. It's all right. You're not doing too bad. This is my friend Madison. He is a professional puppeteer, and all his puppets are really wacky characters. So I thought I'd do a portrait of him and his puppets. Okay. So, um, what made you decide to use watercolor? Well, I thought that I could capture the movement because you have to work rather quickly with watercolor, and also I like layering it. Okay. Um, this texture up in his hair is really wonderful. Um, are there any specific questions or concerns that you have about the piece that you want us to talk about? I'm, I'm wondering about his eyes and eyebrows because he has this weird expression, but I couldn't exactly capture it. Okay. So I wasn't sure how it turned out. Okay. And I kind of like it, but I'm not quite sure. All right, so why don't we start there on, on people giving feedback. So this is Madison right here, the puppeteer, on giving some feedback on his expression. Um, Sammy, the street sweeper, who is right beside Madison in blue and holding the cup. Um, he's the guy, not the little guy with only two legs. Um, he is um, supposed to be in higher detail, which he kind of is when you're, you see it in person. But in the photo, he kind of turned out like all the other puppets. <laughs> okay. And these are also good things to note. And that um, is one of the challenges. So I know, you know, we were talking about that with Jared's piece. And now looking at it here, in, in part of it really thinking about, is your work translating digitally the way that you actually want it to. And if it's not, then you have the choice of either, okay, this is one of the pieces that I might send it in person, or I'm going to go back and work on it a little bit more so it translates digitally the way you fully want it to. Um, 
his lines are a little more solid. Um, yeah, I would say if you if you really want him to stand out as being more detailed than the rest, you need to work on him some more. Another idea, if you really want him to stand out, is to actually, um, you could go in and do some collage elements to create his clothes, which would set him apart from the other puppets. Because right now I'm not seeing... I don't think there's a real obvious difference coming through from him and the mm -hmm. other puppets. If anyone disagrees, Person. you're more than welcome to. Person. When I looked at it a little, I could definitely see the contrast. Um, first of all, great piece. I really like the idea. And great job. I, I, I could tell that it was a puppet, the puppets and the puppets here. Um, but if you want to, um, if you want to um, kind of make this even more clear, maybe you could do something with his eyes maybe. Make him like a little, add like a little more color to his eyes to kind of, because other puppets' eyes are kind of like beady. And, um, if you want, here's just another idea. You could kind of um, maybe, um, you could do this digitally. You can maybe not color him, leave him black and white while the other puppets are in color. Yes, that is a good idea. If I left the um, Sammy and Madison as blank space or the um, other puppets as blank space and left them colored. Mm -hmm. I will have to. Uh, I'm going to use Jared and Parker's recommendation, which was uh, a good one to get these guys in the front to be darker, which is going to help push these to the back. Um, you could, if you wanted to, play with bringing more texture into it. Um, you could sew some of these lines, because I know you like string. Um, I don't think, what do you want his expression, kind of what emotion or story do you want his face to be conveying? Um, is there any way I could share my screen with a picture on it? Would that be alright? Because I have a picture of him. Um, if you know how to, rock on. I think I will. Let's see what I can do here. Okay, so that's... I'm going to come you back. Go to the side. You could go to the okay, sidebar, I believe. Screen share. Can you yeah. see them? Yes. Okay, so that's kind of what I'm thinking of. And he's rather wacky looking, but he kind of looks happily sinister. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah, so I'm going to have back so people can see your drawing. Here. I can. Okay. So I think you you've started to get him in the eyebrows. You could do a little bit more shading under underneath this eyebrow. Um, I think actually more what you need to change um, in the facial expression is his mouth. So, because right now his mouth is kind of like just just straight across, almost looking like not angry, but close to being angry. In getting one of like a little bit more of a diagonal, so this edge is kind of like going up. Do you know what I mean? Yes. I think it's and I can probably do that. Wait, let me grab the piece. That's a bit more detail. Okay. I agree with you. I think I could do that without redoing the whole thing, though. Yes, we don't want to have to redo the whole thing. Um, yeah, I think that will change his expression. Cool. So that is that is the end. That is everyone's. Um, so um, I will hang out here if you have any more questions about last week's work or where you're going. This week, so this week you are working on some sort of self-portrait. It is up to you on what that means. Um, so I gave you a bunch of examples of self-portraits of artists throughout history. You are more than welcome to pull in more references. That It's not like limited to those references. Um, you can do any size you want, any medium you want. Um, and I'm also very open 
to, as long as you can kind of explain yourself, defend yourself, really open to your interpretation of a self-portrait. Meaning, um, a self-portrait doesn't necessarily have to be of your face. So if you are, you could think about if you don't want to do your face, what's the most defining characteristic about you or what's something that's going to tell more of a story about you. So um, if you really work with your hands a lot and you're a super shy person, maybe you hate people looking at your face and you'd prefer them looking at your hands. So maybe we actually get some kind of image of you drawing with your hands or you cooking with your hands. Um, maybe we get the image of the back of your head. But whatever it is, um, it's totally fine. So I'm very open to your interpretation of what a self-portrait is. Um, and as usual, you're welcome to, if you're you know, kind of stuck on ideas or, or want some feedback, you're welcome to send me pieces in progress throughout the week and I will send information your way. So that's what you're doing for your second breadth piece. Any questions Great. about anything? Um, Kaylee, did you want me to include some dimensions and mediums whenever I send a piece? Yes, if at all possible, um, when you send pieces, if you can just tell me um, what the dimensions are and what the mediums are, it kind of helps me when I'm looking at them, and I try and look at them as much as possible, also how like the AP readers will look at them, and they will have the information of the size and the medium, because other times I normally can guess, but sometimes I am just kind of um, <laughs> imagining what you might have been using and imagining what the size actually is. Um, and did you all, I think you got to use it, so we're trying out a different rubric, which I think appeared to make sense to all of you so far. Um, if that seems confusing to you at any point, let me know. I know Addie asked for clarification, which I think I've got her under control of using um, kind of those, those chart checklists that I've made for you. And those you're just adding on to every piece, because that's sort of your visual record. Um, so that you can see as you do each piece, am I bringing something new to the table? Um, otherwise, it's sometimes kind of easy to convince yourself that you're bringing something new to the table, but you really aren't. Um, and that's, we want to catch that as you're moving forward, not like, oh my gosh, I got to piece eight and I really haven't changed much. Um, RJ says, and my focus is still 2D. You are correct. Right, nice. All right. So Addie and I are getting snow. Is anybody else getting snow right now? No, I'm getting rain though. You're getting rain. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's no. rain's not nearly as much fun as snow. Kaylee's not getting snow, so it's. I think Jared and Parker are somewhere warm. I always forget where you all live. Um, I'm waiting for a really big blizzard. I, but I don't know if that's gonna happen. <laughs> not today, anyway. All right, well, it has been almost an hour, so I'm going to let you all go and make some more um, beautiful art, unless you want me to answer more questions. Addie says, I think I asked you this earlier, can I mix 2D and 2D? I have no idea what you're typing. <laughs> I think you're typing right now. Oh, and um, just one thing, just to let you know, I'm submitting some of the stuff um, that I had to submit that's a little late for this week. But I'm awesome. working on submitting it right now. Okay. I did some of a creative format for the music one. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so, so we got Judy and 3D. Um, yes depending on how 3D it gets. So just um, as you're as you're doing it or thinking about it, just keep sending it to me, Addy, um, and we'll go from there. Um, as far as your book, can you tell me a little bit more about what you're thinking? 
Or show me? I bind books, so um, I and I like doing them, and I want to get into some more creative bindings, so I just do kind of standard format now. Mm -hmm. But if I did like a really art book style book, would it count as two? Uh, I don't think so. I think if I think if there was if you if you made the book and then either did something on the cover or did something on like one of the pages inside. How about if I made the paper? Like made a very for the cover. Because here, wait, I can show you. I have one up here. Okay. Well, I had one down here. I think I took it back up. I can get it, but... I think all of that, what you need to keep thinking about is um, what 2D design principles are you showing. So if you're making the paper, um, there's you're probably still going to need to do something to the paper to make it bring in some elements and principles. So I think it can definitely be, I mean, I love book binding, so like the lover of paper and book binding in me wants to be like, yeah, um, but my understanding of the portfolio part of me is like you could definitely, so if I made this book, which I didn't, but pretending I did, um, there could, you know, even if you did some kind of like really interesting pattern detail on the actual binding of the pages, that could become something. Um, but I don't think just the binding. I I would be nervous saying yes, or it's yes. like did a page and then there's nothing beautiful in here, it's just doodling, but like if you did your book and maybe drew something in it or painted something in it and we photographed it that you could, or not we, you photographed it, um, in a way that you could see your drawing and the binding, so I, I think it's really, um, I think it could be a powerful part of a piece. Um, yeah. Like I, since you're already doing it and love doing it, I think it could be cool to find a way to incorporate that into it, but I don't think the binding itself can can be it. Does that make sense? How about I didn't hear that part. How about batik? Yeah. On fabric? Mm hmm Okay. Yeah. Yes. That because that's work. still, um, like, that's, going to be about the pattern and about the design. So any fabric design, like I had some of my um, some of my students did like block printing on fabric and and they did that as a piece. So yeah, you could do that. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? All right, so Kaylee, I'm excited to see what that um, last drawing turns into. And definitely consider just, um, especially that one painting we talked about, really working the mountains out a little bit. And then you have two breadth pieces done, which is even more exciting. <laughs> yeah, that's always good news. All right, well, have a wonderful evening, and we will chat next week. All right, thank you. Yeah. Bye. See you next week.